Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Node.js and JSTAG to publish Postgres database as an OData feed. So first what we're going to do is we're going to download the example from GitHub. Uh, it's under the user of JSTAG. So I'm going to put this URL in the in the box description. So um, here they show you the steps. It's like quite easy. So first what we need to do is to create an empty database in Postgres. For that I have already uh, opened the PG admin here. So I'm going to create a database. Okay, so the database is done. It's here and it's an empty database. If we check there is no tables on it. So then uh, you have to download this and I already did that. So um, let's go to the folder where I have it. I'm going to strike this. Put in here. Okay, so then they say that you need to to change the configuration. For that, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, which is some like specialized version of Visual Studio uh, for this type of project. So you can use Notepad if you want. Um, but just to show you all the folder, I'm going to do this. You said um, Visual Studio Code. So we have opened all the folder here and they say that you need to change the connection. So let's see here. You need to go to the ConnectTS, which is a TypeScript um, file and change the values of the connection. So let's go. We'll go to source, utils, connect TS. So in here you browse down and after scroll down a little bit, uh, you can change the parameters for your connection. In my case, the user is still Postgres, which is the default user for the database. And the password is my name. And the database name is Norway. We just created that. So we're going to save that. And let's go again to the tutorial. And they say that you need to run the command npm run build. So you can build because right now the source is on like the new version of JavaScript, a new standard, which is called ES6. And no, it doesn't run ES6. It only runs an older version. ES6 is really new, it's like maybe last year, December 2016. So there is a translator compiler called Babel that it changed the new version of JavaScript to the like most current or stable version, which is the one that Node is running. Um, at least that's what I find out because I'm somehow new in JavaScript. I'm a C-sharp developer, so it's not my field. I'm trying to do these videos as a uh, motivation for myself to learn more about uh, JavaScript. So then we need to go here. We need to open a common prompt. For that, we press Shift, then right click and open a common window here. So then is npm run, uh, is build run or run build? I don't remember. Let's check. Run build. Oh, this time it didn't. Oh, what we need to, sorry, before that, we need to install all the packages. So that's npm install. That will install all the packages that are defined in the package JSON here and all the requirements that you need. So it's the old data set. The, um, it will be, um, let's see, express all data before 
PG or data before server, uh, PG, which is the connector to the database, and Ramda. So with that command, uh, see, I have downloaded all the reference that we need, all the packages that we need. So we can do a clear screen, that's a CLS, and then we run again, npm run build. And it works. So now we should do a test. It's not necessary, but it's good to do it. NPM test. So it's running all the tests. And it's going to skip one and fail in one. Uh, I don't know what's the reason. I guess I need to, to put um, an issue on GitHub. But basically, it will work. I mean, if we check what happened, they said 30 tests uh, were successful. One was pending and two failed. The two that failed were the update for the product and for the category. And the one that was skip is uh, get product order by name. I don't know why. So, but basically most of it worked pretty well, so I think we can use it. So then you just run npm start. And this will start serving the application. Um, if you want to recreate the data, you can do init dv, which will uh, do the insert and the will insert the data on the table and do the create table uh, script. So let me show you where everything is in, in, in the code so you know a little bit about it. So if you go to the source, uh, you can see the server TS. And basically in here, uh, it connects to the database, it drops the tables, and it creates the tables. And then it insert a JSON that is here in the model, I think. No, uh, the JSON will be here in products. Products is the JSON for the products. So you see there are JSON objects that represent some products and will be the same for category. Here are the categories and the JSON that represent them. And in the model, you see the metadata that describe how the table is working. And then you have the controller, which in the controller, there are two controllers, one for product and one for um, one for category, who do the data operations, like select, select one, uh, get, um, pot, post, put, and so on. So you can check how those um, controllers are created so you can create the controllers for your own tables. And that's, I think, pretty much it. So let me show you how the server is working. If we do localhost 3000, you will see this is the metadata. There are, um, it's a JSON with two values, categories and products, and they say that those are entity sets. So if we do categories, here's the JSON of the categories. So um, the, the data which is in the table is served as a JSON feed in here. The same will be with the products. You see all the products in here. So you can consume whatever is in the table as a JSON feed through this URL. And if you want to see the metadata, you can do dollar sign meta, I think, or I don't know if it's metadata. No, it's metadata, I think. Yes, and here you see um, the schema and how it is created, the entity types, 
all the actions which are basically in this case are store procedures or functions within the database and this work really really fast it's a I will say like lightning fast uh, server or layer to publish a database as a data feed and now you don't have to create a specialized web service method like get products insert product delete product so everything is already published I mean that's the beauty of this that uh, you can go uh, publish your database really with little or non overhead as HTTP um, as an HTTP or data feed so you can connect um, mobile applications with these desktop applications so for me it's like a perfect data source so it's not um, it's totally independent of the language a programming language that you're using and you can create all your logic um, in the database and in the um, OData server and then create applications for mobile for example for web for desktop sharing all the same logic uh, so it's really nice and the, the the format how you query the data it will be the same in all of the of the um, languages basically you have to do an HTTP request some of them some of the languages have a specialized ways to connect to to Odera service, but for me this is more than perfect. I'm an Odera enthusiast, so that's why I'm recording this video. And well, that's pretty much what I have so far. I'm going to be extending these Odera videos soon um, with more operations, more tests, how to connect with from desktop application, and so on. So uh, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button, like the little bell there so you can see when I publish a new video. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.